minutes in post. Perfect time for a call. Uh, this is Jeff. I Aaron, the day perfect. you won? Yeah, I won. And what did you win? I won a forest continuum. Please, oh, you won the complete? Wow, awesome. So just give everybody a quick uh, rundown of what you did for your so, fitness and post. Just so, it was a four month competition, and uh, in that four months, I walked over a million steps, over 500, and, oh, close to 600 miles, and over 5,000 stories. <laughs> the real question is, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm actually in the alumni competition right now. Oh, I'm okay. in well, let's take five minutes, everybody. Uh, we have uh, some extra tickets if you want to buy for our uh, raffle, and we'll talk audio in a couple of minutes.
sound editor and a sound designer, uh, amongst other things. Uh, and I have a textbook. I think I'm going to give one of those away tonight that uh, talks about some of the things that I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, so I am going to talk about split stems and audio uh, deliverables. I was going to say recoverables. Uh, that's sometimes the case as well. I know a number of audio people here, uh, either from the group or from my real life. Uh, I'm just curious, any picture editors here deliver audio deliverables or splits? Come on down, don't worry. I don't have all the pretty pictures like Jeff. I'm just going to blabber like Jeff. All right, so what are stems? Uh, this is a question that comes up all the time. What's a stem? What's a split? Uh, what's a split track? What's a stem out? What's an isolated track? Guess what? They're all the same thing. <coughs> so if someone says, uh, I need those stems, Woody. Somebody says, I need those splits, Woody. Uh, we're all talking about the same thing. Uh, and basically what they are is they are elements from within the full mix. So your full mix is the final mix of the show. And then we will take the elements that make up that mix and uh, break it into isolated stems, splits, tracks, whatever you want to call it. So your full mix uh, could be surround or 5.1, it could be stereo or 2.0, uh, it could be mono, 1.0. Uh, and your split tracks or your stems could be uh, the same. Whoops. It could be uh, 5.1, uh, mono, or 2.0. So what are we breaking our full mix into? Well, basically, we're breaking them into dialogue, music, and effects. D, M, E. Those are the things that make up your mix. Now, there are lots of different types of dialogue. There are lots of different types of effects, lots of different types of music. But in the most general sense, if we're going to take a full mix and we're going to deliver stems, we're going to split that full mix into some various configuration of dialogue, music, and effects. So before I get, we're going to get into the weeds here. Uh, you better take notes because there is a test. Uh, but uh, just to give a graphical representation here, um, this uh, I use Pro Tools. This is uh, a Pro Tools uh, window. Each of those are audio tracks. If you look at the top track, that is the full mix in surround. So there's six lines. That's six tracks of audio. Uh, surround is 5.1, but it's 6. It's 5 tracks plus 0.1. It's 6 tracks. Uh, so that's a full mix on top in surround. That was a, a required deliverable, of course. It's a full mix. Below that is the what's called the LTRT, the stereo down mix, whatever you want to call it. That's the exact same mix, except being 6 channels, it's now 2 channels. That's the full mix in stereo. Uh, below that, in green, it's kind of hard to tell it's green, but uh, that's what this network calls the MDE, Music, Dialogue, and Effects STEM. And what that means is that there's no narrator as part of this particular track. So they required an M MDE in surround. They also required a MDE in stereo. So below that is my MDE and stereo. They also wanted the music only. So that's the entire program of music cut and edited to the picture, but that's all it is. It's just the music. Below that are the effects. Only the effects in sync with picture. Below that, that uh, big red one, you can't tell it's red, but that's red. Uh, that's a mono dialogue only track. And that's one of the deliverables for this particular program. And then Finally, at the bottom is the narrator only. So that right there is a very simple, and I'm going to get into some really complicated versions, but that's a really simple deliverable for a show. This was a one-hour network uh, television show and a fairly simple uh, set of deliverables. 
Uh, and just to uh, belabor things a, li a little bit further, this is a stereo set of stems. Uh, the top mix is the top two tracks. Of, now these are what we call split tracks. So instead of it being interleaved, stereo has two tracks. Uh, these are split. So stereo is two tracks, or surround is six tracks. Uh, yes, this will get confusing. So the top two tracks are left and right, full mix. The next two tracks below it are left and right minus the narrator. Uh, below that is the narrator. Below that is the dialogue only. Below that is the M and E. So that's the music and the effects married together. In this case, with no dialogue, although that's not always the case. The music only, two tracks. The effects only, two tracks. Then uh, they also have a uh, a mono effects deliverable. That's which that lays my rolls in that track. And then the track on the bottom is the beeps, the sensor beeps, which as you can see in this show had no sensor beeps. So uh, that's what a delivery looks like to me. It takes a lot to get there. Um, I've had producers say to me, I don't understand why it costs so much money, why it takes you so long. <laughs> the show has already been mixed. Because in their world, the editor has cut the show, has added sound effects, has added music, has dialogue tracks in there, everything's mixed. <laughs> what are we using you for? And I say on the simplest uh, level, that. <laughs> most, picture, most picture editors, that scares picture editors. The few of you who deliver stems, I don't know if you deliver them in nonlinear editors or you deliver them in audio programs, but making something like that easy in Avid or Final Cut is not necessarily all that easy. In Pro Tools it's very easy because we're pretty much focused on audio. So uh, let's get down to some more specifics about all this. So what are your typical audio requirements for delivery from a distributor or from a network? Uh, well, first we're going to start with level specifications. So I'm going to tell you that your mix can never be above minus 10 decibels. Your mix can never be above minus 6 decibels. Your mix can never be above minus 2 decibels. It doesn't matter. Pick a number. That's what it seems like they do. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because whatever it is, you, you have to match that level. So any audio requirement is going to have levels. And it's not just going to be how hot can you make your mix. It's also going to be what's the dynamic range of that mix. Dynamic range is simply loudest to softest. We measure, in digital audio, we measure everything in decibels, and the decibel scale is measured in minus. It's measured in minus because zero is it. You can't get any hotter than zero. And if you keep pushing that zero, it's not going to sound so good. So we do everything in minus, and the decibel scale is measured in minus. In the United States, the reference tone is minus 20 decibels. So if we were saying that the average level of this program was 20, minus 20 decibels throughout the whole program, that means you have 20, if you went to zero, you got 20 decibels of dynamic range. But in the real world, it doesn't work like that. Because in the real world, they say, no, we want you to deliver your mix at minus 10. So they've just taken 50% of my dynamic range away from me. They're saying, we want you to keep the level around minus 20, but never go above minus 10. So now, I'm in a different world. So, all of these specifications come from a specification doc. Every single network has a different set of specifications. Every distributor has a different set of specifications. They all have different, we're going to get into some of this, but just so you know, typical audio requirement, level specification. Let's get a little more in depth about that. In the United States, we're television. 
the United States Congress because they're such go-getters. <laughs> they like to get their fingers into everything, um, have mandated what the audio needs to be for mixing for television. With a law called the Calm Act. You can read the Calm Act online. It's about six paragraphs. And it basically throws the ball to something called the ATSC 85 compliance document. The ATSC is the American Television Standards Committee. These are smart people. These are not politicians. And the document, the ATSC 85, is a very complex document with all kinds. It's, it's a very fascinating read if you're an audio geek like me. Yes, I've read it. Uh, the bottom line of it, anyway, anybody who came to my loudness webinar that I, or seminar that I did, uh, what, six months ago? I go, I went into the weeds all about the Calm Act and a measurement called LKFS, which is loudness on a K-weighted scale measured in true peak, something I'm sure all of you are fascinated with. <laughs> and I talked about it for about an hour, um, and I'm not going to talk about it now. But I will tell you the results of the Calm Act, which is, that if you're looking at your mix on a LKFS meter, which is a Dolby meter, a lot of different companies make them, Dolby is the most popular probably, uh, the Calmac specifies that your audio has to read minus 24 on an LKFS meter over the length <coughs> of the program plus or minus 2 dB. So if they measure my audio on an LKFS meter, if it comes in at 22, I'm good. If it comes in at 26, I'm good. If it comes in at minus 27 or minus 21, I'm screwed. Coming back, i got to remix the show. Uh, because Congress knows audio. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so the Column Act has a couple of uh, elements to it. This LKFS reading. Uh, also, that we measure our audio in something called a true peak meter. Because there is a sample peak meter, and most of the meters that we all use are sample peak meters, and they're not accurate. They're about three to five decibels off. So if you look at a true peak meter or a sample peak meter, you will not get the same reading. We now are bound <coughs> by doing all of our measurements using a true peak meter. So the Calmac compliance says minus 24 LKFS, and measured on a true peak meter, you get to go up to minus two true peak. So if you're only losing two dB, so you have 18 decibels of headroom from that minus 20 in the column, not in your specification doc that says we want you to do minus 24, but we still want you to deliver it to us at minus 10. <laughs> so uh, as I said, I'm not gonna go any deeper into that. It's a whole other thing. If you're fascinated by it, um, I write an article, I write a column for Pro Video Coalition. It's called Sound for Picture, Woody Woodhall, hard to find. Uh, I have a 2,500 word article about the Calm Act, about LKFS readings, and if you're interested, you should read it. It's fascinating. <laughs> I'm going to move forward. Another typical audio requirement is your split tracks. So that's your full mix and the associated dialogue, music, and effects uh, that go with that. Sometimes they specify those tracks to be dipped. And sometimes they specify those tracks to be undipped. What does that mean? God, I wish I knew. No. Uh, okay, very simply, a dip track is your stem. So let's say, because it's the one we dip the most, your music track. So you're mixing a program, you have somebody speaking, we bring the music down underneath, we're dipping the music, and now they finish speaking and we have a dramatic, unscripted moment, and the music goes full. That's a dipped track. Well, a lot of times your stems would be required to be dipped. And so the practical purpose of a dipped stem is if we look back at this mix 
that top, those top two tracks are the mix, left and right. Well, if you take those elements, the effects elements, the music elements, the dialogue element, and the narrator element, and you play them all on a mixing console at Unity Game. I'm sure you all know what Unity Game is. So when you're looking at a, a mixing console, every mixing console has a zero, right? It has numbers below, it has numbers above, but it also, they all have zero and they all line up at zero. That's called Unity Game. So that means you're not adding or subtracting any game. It's Unity. So if you play those stems, not the mix, you play those stems at Unity Game, it's going to recreate that mix exactly. Pretty useful if you want to change things later. So now you want to repurpose your, uh, I dipped it under. Uh, so you have a network that wants to repurpose the, the program in a different language. So what they do here is they mute your dialogue track. They don't want your dialogue track, it's in English. They're going to now revoice that track in Spanish. Having my dipped music may not be useful to them because in Spanish it might be longer or in Spanish it might be shorter. So there's some network solution, again, it's all over the map. Some networks say, give me the music undipped. So what I do is I provide them the entire music track edited to picture exactly the way it is, except it doesn't have any of my volume automation rights. It's just the music played throughout. So they, later, can remix my show and probably make it sound so much better than what I did. But anyway, um, so simply dipped, volume automation, undipped, no volume automation. Um, and then also an audio requirement, probably the most important. Is this mix going to be in mono? Is this mix going to be in stereo? Is this mix going to be in surround? Uh, and then what are the configurations of your splits? Do you have a dialogue only track? Do you have a music only track? Do you have a music and effects track? There's as many configurations as there are networks and distributors. Um, so, some other uh, thoughts. Nomenclature is specific to each broadcaster. Typically, a delivery document will be, let's say, 100 pages. And it's going to detail the bug goes on the lower right-hand side. Lower thirds must be here. Uh, we only use these colors on our text. Uh, a million things. A 99-page document is going to have 98 pages 